Hello everyone, I'm Silent Death, and welcome back to the Comprehensive Ferrum Aerospace Research Tutorial. In this episode, we are going to do another case study. For this episode, we will be designing a supersonic flyer. Assuming that you have these technologies unlocked. Namely, advanced aerodynamics and high altitude flying, plus a landing gear. I don't think we're going to say that you have this unlocked. So we'll do this without Verners. And we'll also be assuming that you have a level 2 runway and a level 2 space plane hangar. Now that we have access to the Mark II parts, that is what we're going to be using. We're going to be designing this craft for a cruising altitude of about 25 kilometers and a cruising speed of about Mach 4. We want it to be able to get from one side of the globe to the other and be able to land in rough terrain. We also want it to have a modest science package for gathering science while you're out picking up contracts around Kerbin's atmosphere. I do not believe that the shape of this is narrow enough for the mock cone at a Mach 4. The angle for the mock cone at a Mach 4 is 14.478 degrees. So we'll be measuring our mock cone from here outwards. So starting at a width of 2.5 meters and a length of 4.5 meters. Now then, we'll add some fuel. A liquid fuel engine or a liquid fuel tank, a short one, should be sufficient. We'll want the liquid fuel adapter. And we're going to want a cargo bay. I think the large cargo bay. And then we'll, we'll put this on the end. Inside the cargo bay, we'll have some science packages. Put as much weight forward as we can to help with the stability. And all the other things like thermometers and stuff you can cram in there if you want but they're not really going to affect the aerodynamics so we aren't going to worry about them let's see we will want a tail section plop that on and i think we'll go with these for the engines We'll probably end up doing a delta wing design. But first, let's cram these on. Then we'll take them off and we'll attach them to our wing. So, how long is it to. I guess we'll probably put the wing out to right there. 12.1 and that was 4.5 doing the math for the mock angle tells us that our wings can be uh, 2 meters roughly 
Yeah, about 1.962 meters. So let's see what that looks like. That's about as close as we can get there. With the root. About to like that. And then we'll do the offset. With the tip. About like that. Does not look like enough wing, does it? Let's see what that tells us. Angle of attack of 12 degrees is not good enough. Alright, what we'll do... We're going to take a couple of canards. Drop that down to one meter. Drop that down to the lowest possible. Make it that one meter too. And then we'll offset them forward a little bit. That's probably close to the very tip. Then the leading edge we're going to change to a triangular. And we'll go ahead and set up the controls for this so that we don't forget. Drop down the mass strength thing. To point 0.4. We'll also make sure that we remove all the tanks here and drop this down at 2.42. Shouldn't need any more fuel. Alright, what does that give us? 10 degrees. But... Now we can go measure the mock angle from here out. And that is one meter out. And I guess we'll say about half a meter from the nose. So that means our length is... 17.7 we'll say it's 11.2 meters and see how wide our wings can be then that works out to about 2.89 meters Two point eight seven. we could have kind of a cut off delta wing where the offset or the thickness of the tip is something like this. We did something like that. If it becomes a problem, let's see how this looks first. Eight degrees. Once we get all the control surfaces on, I think that'll probably be good enough. So let's get rid of the trailing edge, add in our engines, about there, uh, didn't do two of them. That should work. I really don't like the way that these clip in, but uh, not really much we can do about that right now. Okay, that leaves us with 1.88 thrust weight. I was kind of hoping for about two, but that'll have to do. Let's see where our center of lift and our center of mass is. So our center of lift is, of course, too far forward because we don't have the control surfaces or stuff on. 
not terribly surprising. We will add in these. Turn off angle snap. that right about the middle say two meters nope not quite that far that looks about right and we're also going to take these thickness of the tip and, and narrow that down as much as we can And we'll also cannot match the shape. Okay. This... That looks about as good as we're going to get. So our center of lift has moved back a little bit. That should help save on our mass a tiny bit. Just a tiny bit, though. Now let's add the tail sections. We got to make sure these don't get in the way of our thrust. Let's see. Drop that down. And then we're going to have a pretty odd tail section here. We'll need that offset a little bit. Then no trailing edge. Might still be a little bit too far. That might work. And then we'll add a tail section. Sometimes the right click thing messes up. Okay, that's going to need to be quite a bit taller. That might do. Let's see, we'll change the surface for the bottom to be standard. Center of mass is still too far back. What if we put on these? Okay, maybe I do need to bump this out a little bit more. And then we'll extend these. Actually, we can just offset the tips, can't we? They merge like that. Kind of. I guess that's pretty good. That puts our center of lift way far back. That's what I want to see. Can't ever remember what key to press for this. Okay, that one's probably about that tall. Oh, we must have had two of those. Let's change that little offset at the top. And 
uh, the bottom thing. Okay, that looks good. Now we need to uh, save this and reload it so that we can do the right click menu. Alright, let's start with you. Remove all tanks. Drop your mass strength down. An eye on those two. Drop your mass strength down. Change you to just y'all. No tanks there, so we can just drop you down. Drop you down and change you to just be pitch. You may want to set in some flaps for that control surface. I think we'll just have these two be pitch and this be a just roll. Alright, we're only uh, about 10 metric tons. Let's see what it look like now. That's wrong. Okay, that's acceptable. Angle of attack is still a little bit more than I would like it to be. Does changing the thickness of the wings have any effect on that? No. None at all. Hmm. Let's look at this then. We'll run through the numbers. Takeoff should be fine. Guess I should do both of them. A ah, little roll instability, which means that we need to roll that up a little bit. Maybe a little bit more. And that probably means we can eat these out a tiny bit. Go ahead and bump them out to three. Press F so it's relative to the part. Oh, there we go. Should take care of the roll instability. Give us a little bit of dihedral. Go up to a 0.5 now. Still good. How do you feel about 0.35? No real change there. 0.5? Nothing much going on there. Point seven. Stalling at about 10 degrees. Point seven. Might mean a shallow climb. Okay, oops, that's point one. Have to go to one. One, okay, then everything gets better at Mach 1 and higher, which is kind of what we want for this plane. Landing may be a little bit difficult, but it shouldn't be too bad. Mach 3 and Mach 4. See our neutral pitching moment is just above zero. We can set up some flaps if we so desire. Not sure if I want to or not. I'm trying to decide. I think what we'll do that. Let's try just the angle of attack. This one's positive. Five, 
four. Okay, that one's actually the wrong direction. Now then, what do you think? Okay, that's a lot less of a slope. Then if we change the angle of attack here. That may be a little bit of an issue. But not too much of one. We do stall kind of right about there. Could bump it down to say, let's try 85. Yep, that doesn't work. Okay, so somewhere around in here. That's probably about perfect. We will run the mock thing. So attack is 10. It's probably going to be our highest one. And we'll do mock from a zero to, uh, we'll do 4.5. The sweep mock. So we have no problems with our pitching moment, which was kind of what I was concerned about. And we'll, let's go look at the mock four thing again. And see how efficient we are. We actually are quite efficient at about 10 degrees. So shouldn't really need to change anything there. Now then let's go under here and add some a landing gear. Adjustable medium. I think we'll go with the adjustable medium. Put it kind of far back. We do have a fair amount of pitch authority, so we shouldn't really have a problem with that. And then we'll do a smaller one up front. So let's toggle the heat shield. And I do an alignment guide. Fortunately, the alignment guide only does two of them. Or only does one of them. Doesn't do symmetry thing. Okay, so we will flip this side, auto align the wheels, do a wheel height. Still not quite pitched as I would like. Let's make sure the wheel is still aligned properly. It should be, but just checking. We'll raise you up a little bit. I think that works. All right, and we don't have any instability issues. Let's uh, take this for a uh, test flight. Oh no, let's not. Let's put some air brakes on first. We do actually want to be able to land. I'll use these air brakes, or maybe I'll use these air brakes. Turn off angle snap so that they'll actually attach properly. Hmm, air brake. Okay, maybe a large air brake. Nope, that's too big. Guess it's these then. Then we're going to, uh, I wonder if tail strikes will be an issue. Maybe. We'll put in one of these to handle that. That should save our tail. And let's go ahead and stick on some uh, drag chutes. 
Where can we put those? Could put them, yeah, right here. Want two of them? Hopefully that won't rip off the wings. Or get burnt up by the exhaust. Otherwise we could put them up a little bit forward. So action groups. Click on that. Then we get the real shoots thing, which apparently we can't move. We want it to have a drag shoot texture, just because. We're going to be on Kerbin. We want a drag shoot. We're planning on landing at... Oh, 150 meters per second. We want to... Uh, slow down really, really fast, like 75 meters per second. It is using the dry mass, switch to the wet mass. So we may still have some fuel at some point. Parachute shoes, we're using two of them. And apply, and apply. So that uh, should be everything. We'll adjust the act or the staging. And of course, we'll need to make sure that we have an engineer on this, which I don't have in the save, but if you're doing this for real, you would need an engineer to repack the chutes. You should be able to reach them from the ground. All right, let's take this boy for a test flight. Few things we forgot to do. One, add a carbon engineer component. Two, turn on the steering on our front landing gear. There. Three is set up our fuel tanks. So these are going to be zero. They'll have auto pump and balance. This is going to be one, so it will pump out first. Auto pump and balance, though it really just needs auto pump. And then uh, this is going to be auto pump and balance. So the fuel will pump out of this tank first, and then be balanced between these three. What else was there? We need to check our center of mass. It's not moving very much, and it's moving a little bit back. Shouldn't cause any problems there. Okay, what else did we need to do? Set that up. We've set that up. Oh, yes, we need to balance our engine intakes, which are already balanced, but let's go ahead and click on it just to make sure. So, I guess that's because of the way we placed them. They got balanced properly. Oh, there's one more thing that I wanted to do, which is add one more set of intakes. The tiny uh, structural ones. Since we're going to be flying a bit higher than what we have set up. If I can get this right. On. We didn't have mirror on. Do that there, and then we will scooch that back a bit. Might want to rotate it a tiny bit too. And then scooch it back in. That actually looks pretty good. I like that. And then we'll have enough intakes for flying really high, really fast. Let's do another attempt at trying this. All right, on the runway, brakes, full thrust, those, fine control. I think we have enough thrust that we don't need to wait for engines to spin up. Going pretty fast. Wait till about right now. 
raise those landing gear. And we are just zooming off the ground. Okay. That's correct. We are really going fast. Already at Mach 1 at 3 kilometers? Wow. Climb faster then. A little bit sensitive on the controls. Zooming up. And still really, really just accelerating rapidly, even in this steep of a climb. Engines up to 1.85 thrust to weight. Intake is still fine. Really climbing fast. If you want to get up there fast, this is definitely the plane for you. Mach 2 and climbing. We'll lower our attack angle a little bit. A lot. A whole lot. There we go. Okay, Mach 3.7 and climbing. Can't hold prograde with this because the jab is not skilled up enough in the save. Oops, that was the wrong direction. There we go. What is, what's on fire? Okay, the air brakes are on fire. That's probably a bug. I guess we won't be relying on them. Dropping a little bit faster than I'd like, but we're at the right speed now. We have plenty of intake air. Parachutes are getting a little bit toasty. Of course, I'm playing with the deadly reentry. We're already at our desired speed, just not our desired altitude. We'll turn on this. We'll set pilot and assistance. Mode wing leveler. Altitude for... Actually, let's do this. Do 25-ish. And we'll just cut it off right when we get where we need to be. at 115. It's like we can go higher than we were planning on and faster, which is even better. How we on fuel? We have another 30 minutes of fuel left at this speed. That gives us what as far as say flight data puts us at a range of about 1100 kilometers, which is probably pretty good. Oh, we're going as high as we need to go. Target speed. Let's drop that down to negative 10. Actually, it might actually speed up enough that that goes up. does not seem like it so we'll drop it down a little bit ninety seven and ninety eight 
99 and 100. We'll do one more. There we go. Just to make absolutely certain. And let's see how this handles time warp. Look at that. Four times time warp and barely a wiggle. Definitely a good plane for doing missions on the other side of the planet. Now let's uh, go back in and see if we can land. Or just pick a spot and see if we can land. Alright, we are coming in for our approach a little bit fast. Go. And that should slow us down pretty well. Go ahead and get out of the landing gear. I'll drop this down a little bit. Uh, negative 20 should do. And then... Ready to go back to zero. Down to... Uh, 100. Ooh. And there we go. Paul's controls there. Tap on the brakes. And then grab whatever science and stuff we wanted to. And then we can just take right back off after we redid our parachutes of course uh, but I'm not going to bother with that our little tail strike thing helping us out and uh, that is going to be it for this episode like if you like subscribe if you're not Leave a comment if you have any questions about what was covered in this episode, and I will do my best to answer them. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.